Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Our Lady Helper Christians Parish, Way of the Cross, on Good Friday. This year we bring to you a recording of our last year's Way of the Cross on Don Bosco Oval. It's important that we gather as a community in your own homes, but also here in spirit and heart and mind, to remember Jesus' passion, that extraordinary journey of love. So let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, you took up your cross with complete love for us. You walked the way to your death in order to give us the freedom of new life. We willingly take up our own crosses today and follow you on your journey, walking with you on this pathway of love. Only you can lead us away from selfish darkness to the light of self-giving love. Stir up within us the desire to forgive our enemies, to love our friends more deeply, and to take upon our own shoulders the needs of the poor and vulnerable, whom you love so much. Dear Mary, Mother of God, be our example of courage now as we face this way of the cross. Pray for us as we journey here that our lives might be filled with grace. Give us clean hearts, Holy Spirit, and kindle within us the fire of your love. Let us be thankful for the merciful love of Christ, which led him to embrace the cross. And lead us now to the loving arms of God our Father, with whom we hope to live forever and ever. Amen. These 14 steps that you are now about to walk, you do not take alone. I walk with you, though you are you and I am I, yet we are truly one, one Christ. And therefore, my way of the cross 2,000 years ago and your way now are also one. But note this difference. My life was incomplete until I crowned it by my death. Your 14 steps will only be complete when you have crowned them by your life. The Agony in the Garden In a garden, the first Adam sweat was punishment for sin. In a garden, the second Adam sweat pours from his struggle with the world's sin. Jesus came out and went as was his custom to the Mount of Olives and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, Jesus said to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down on the ground. Rabbi, Jesus replies, is it with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man?
first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because of thy holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So, when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas! But in that case, Pilate said to them, What am I to do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified! Why? He asked, What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified! Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression and that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people shouted back, Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. Lord, it is too late for you to be quiet. You have spoken too much. You have fought too much. You got on well with the poor, the trans, the crippled. You belittled the religious regulations. Your interpretations of the law reduce it to one little commandment, to love. Now they are avenging themselves. They have taken steps against you. They have approached the authorities and action will follow. Let us pray. Lord, I know that if I try to live a little like you, I shall be condemned. I am afraid. They are already singling me out. Some smile at me, others laugh, some are shocked, and several of my friends are about to drop me. Help me to fight, help me to speak, help me to live your gospel to the end, to the folly of the cross. Second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because of thy holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. The soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. There, they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak. And having 
twisted some thorns into a crown. They put this on his head. And placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak, and dressed him, in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. Come on! Lord, here is Let your cross. Uh, hurry up! Your cross as if it were your cross. You had no cross and you came to get ours. And all through your life, and along the way to Calvary, you took upon you, one by one, the sins of the world. You have to go forward and bend and suffer. The cross must be carried. Let us pray. Lord, you walk on silently. Is it true then that there is a time for speaking and a time for silence? Is it true that there is a time for struggling and another for the silent bearing of our sins and the sins of the world? Lord, I would rather fight the cross. To bear it, it, it is hard. The more I progress, the more I see the evil in the world. The heavier is the cross on my shoulders. Lord, help me to understand the way of the cross for me. At the dawning of each day, help me to set forth. Jesus falls the first time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because, because of thy holy, holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. It was essential that he should, in this way, ah! become completely like his brother, ah! so that he could be a compassionate and trustworthy high priest of God's religion, able to atone for human sins. That is because he has been through temptation. He is able to help others who are tempted. He fell. He staggered. Then fell prostrate. God in the dust. Let us pray. And so, Lord, I followed you, setting out with confidence, and now I have fallen. I thought I had given myself to you, but I caught sight of a flower on a footpath. I left you. I left the cumbersome cross. And here I am, 
off the road. Possessed of a few faded petals and my solitude. And the others, Lord, pass along the road, broken, exhausted. And crosses are in the making and backs are bending. I am no longer there to fight evil and to help men to drag their loads. I am off the road. Lord, help me not only to follow after you, but to keep steadily on. Keep me from sudden weakness that leaves me stupefied and empty far from the place where you are shaping the world. Come on, get up, get him up! Is he resting too long? Uh. Mother, we adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because of thy holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. As for thy own soul, it shall have a sword to pierce it. Lord, I pity your poor mother. She follows, she follows you. She follows mankind on its way of the cross. She walks in the crowd unknown, but she doesn't take her eyes from you. Every gesture of yours, every sigh, every blow, every wound enters her heart. She knows your sufferings. She suffers your sufferings. And without coming near you, without touching you, without speaking to you, Lord, with you, she saves the world. Let us pray. Lord, show me your mother, Mary, the useless one, the ineffectual one, in the sight of men, but the core redemptrix in the sight of God. Help me to walk among men, eager to know their miseries and their sins. May I never avert my eyes, may I never close my heart, that in welcoming the sufferings of the world with Mary, your mother, I may suffer and redeem.
On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene. Simon, my name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. He passed by on the road. They pressed him into service. The first to come along, a stranger. Lord, you accepted his help. You did not want the help of a friend, the solace of a gesture of love. The generous impulse of one who cared. You chose the enforced help of an indifferent and timid fellow. Lord, all powerful, you sought the help of a powerless man. By your own choosing, you are in need of us. Let us pray. Lord, we need others. The way of man is too hard to be trodden alone. But I avoid the hands outstretched to help me. I want to act alone. I want to fight alone. I want to succeed alone. And yet beside me walks a friend, a spouse, a brother, a sister a neighbor, a fellow worker. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Come on, push him around. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you made me feel welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you feel welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and come to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you do this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. For a long time, Lord, her eyes were on you. She suffered from your suffering. Unable to bear it any longer, she pushed the soldiers aside and wiped your face with a cloth of fine linen. Were your bleeding features imprinted on her cloth? Maybe. In her heart, surely, Lord, I need to contemplate you at great length as a little brother admires and loves his big brother. For I want to resemble you, and for that I must first look at you. 
if you want. I shall become a little like you, since friends who love each other become one. But Lord, too often I pass in front of you carelessly, or am bored when I stop and look at you. And to others, I must be a sad caricature of you. Forgive my body, eager for pleasure. It does not bring your presence to others. Forgive my clouded eyes. In them, others cannot see your light. Forgive my encumbered heart. In it, others do not see your love. Nevertheless, Lord, come to me. My door is open. Jesus falls the second time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because of thy holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. Yet, he was pierced through for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace. And through his wounds, we are healed. Lord, you are spent. Again, you have fallen to the ground. <laughs> this time, you fall not only from the weight of the cross, but from exhaustion. Let us pray. Recurrent suffering dulls the will. My sins, Lord, are dulling my conscience. I get used to evil very quickly. A little self-indulgence here, a small unfaithfulness there, an unwise action further on. And my vision becomes obscured. I no longer see stumbling blocks. I no longer see other people on my road. My ears gradually close. I no longer hear the complaints of men. I find myself on the ground, on the plain, far from the road you laid out for me. Lord, I beseech you, keep me young in my efforts. Spare me the bondage of habit, which lulls to sleep and kills. meets the women of Jerusalem. What are you doing here? We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because of thy holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. Large numbers of people followed him, including women, who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. They weep, they sob. It 
It's easy to understand if you see what men have done to him. And they are powerless. They cannot interfere. So they weep. They weep in pity. Lord, you have seen them. You have heard them. But you said, weep first for your sins. I manage very well, Lord. To pity your sufferings and the sufferings of the world. But to weep for my own sins, that's another matter. I'd rather bemoan those of others. It's easier. I'm well up on that. The whole world passes every day before my tribunal. I've found plenty of guilt in politics, economics, slums, alcohol, films, and industry. I see it in many people, in lazy, fair Christians, who don't understand a thing, and in many others, Lord, many others. All in all, in just about the whole world except me, Lord, teach me that I am a sinner. station, Jesus falls the third time, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. He was insulted and did not retaliate with insults. When he was tortured, he made no threats, but he put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing our falls with his own body on the cross so that we might not die for our faults but live for holiness. Through his wounds you have been healed. You had gone astray like sheep but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Again. <laughs> you do not move from all the soldiers' beatings. Oh boy, are you dead? No, but utterly spent. A minute of terrible anxiety. But you begin again. Just as you are, Lord. And you walk on. Let us pray. Again, I fall every time. I'll never get there. But I've said that before, Lord. And please forgive me. For you were right with me. You were just testing my faith. If I become discouraged, I am lost. If I keep up the fight, I am saved. For you fell a third time, but you had nearly reached Calvary. Come on, boy. The 10th 
station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because of thy holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. They took his clothing and divided it into four shares. One for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, instead of tearing it, let us throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. You had nothing left but your own clothes. You were fond of it. Your mother had woven it for you. But this too had to go. One thing only is necessary, Lord, your cross. Nothing comes between you and the cross. You are going to be united forever, and together you will save the world. Let us pray. And so, Lord, I must give you all these trappings, which hinder me and hide me from your sight. This possessing which stifles the being in me and separates me from others. Thus, Lord, little by little, everything in my life, which is not an expression of your will, must die. How demanding you are. I give and you want more. I'd like to keep a few trifles. A few trifles I cling to and can't bring myself to offer you. But if you want all, Lord, take all. Strip me yourself of my last garment, for I will know that we must die to deserve life as the seed must die to turn into golden grain. station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. God! God! God!
He looked up to the heavens, prayed. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they are doing. Two thieves were crucified with Jesus, one on either side. The first thief sneered at Jesus and said, If you re really are the Son of God, why don't you save us and yourself? But the second thief said, We deserve to die, but this man has done nothing wrong. Remember me, Jesus, when you come as King. Jesus answered, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus' mother, he said, Woman, behold your son. To the disciple, he said, Behold your mother. And from that day, John took Mary into his home as his own mother. It was midday. A shadow passed across the sun. And for a few hours, it was dark. Jesus was exhausted and tired, and he called out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Lord, you stretch at full length on the cross. There, without a doubt, it is made for you. You cover it entirely, and to adhere to it more surely, you allow men to nail you carefully to it. Lord, it was work well done, conscientiously done. Now, you fit your cross exactly, just as a mechanic's carefully filed parts fit the engineer's blueprint. There had to be this precision. Let us pray. Thus, Lord, I must gather my body, my heart, my spirit, and stretch myself at full length on the cross of the present moment. I haven't the right to choose the wood of my passion. The cross is ready to my measure. You present it to me each day, each minute, and I must lie on it. It isn't easy. The present moment is so limited that there is no room to turn around. And yet, Lord, I can meet you nowhere else. It's there that you await me. It's there that together we shall save our brothers. station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee because of thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished in order that scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst.
It was now about the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle, and then Jesus cried out in a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he breathed his last. soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. A few hours more, a few minutes more, a few instants more. For 33 years it has been going on. For 33 years you have lived fully, minute after minute. You can no longer escape now. You are there, at the end of your life, at the end of your road. You are the last extremity. You must take the last step, the last step of love, the last step of life that ends in death. Now, Life slips from each limb, one by one. Finding refuge in his still beating heart, immeasurable heart, overflowing heart, heart as heavy as the world, the world of sins and mis miseries that it bears. Let us pray. He has taken his heavy heart and slowly, laboriously, alone between heaven and earth, in the awesome night, with passionate love, he has gathered his life. He has gathered the sins of the world, and in a cry, he has given all. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Christ has just died for us. Lord, help me to die for you. Lord, help me to die for them. Thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because of thy holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came and took his body down.
your work is done. You can leave your cross. You can come down to rest. You have surely earned it. Slowly you slip down, like a man weary of labor and drowsy with sleep. Your mother takes you in her arms. What a stage you are in. You were not sensible. You died of exhaustion. Perhaps the father did not require so much. But you rest in peace. Over your face, calm and serene, there passes a ray of joy. All is accomplished. You have made your mother suffer, but she is proud of you. Let us pray. Thus, each night my day ended, I fall asleep. What a state I am in sometimes, Lord. But, alas, it is not always in serving the Father that I have become tired. Mary, will you be willing, even so, to watch over me every night? My body is weighed down with its failures, but my heart asks forgiveness. Don't forget, you are the refuge of sinners. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for me, a poor sinner. Grant that through the merits of your Son, I may never fall asleep without receiving the forgiveness of our Father, that each night, resting in peace in your arms, I may learn how to die. Fourteen station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because, because of thy, thy holy cross, thou hast redeemed the world. <coughs> they took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen clothes, following the Jewish burial custom. near at hand, 
and they lead, lead Jesus there. Let us forget it now and all go home. He is buried and the stone is in place. His family is in tears, his friends are lost. This time it is really over. Let us pray. Lord, it is not over. You are in agony till the end of time. I know. Men tread the way of the cross in relays. The resurrection will only be completed when they have reached the end of the way. I am on the road. I have a small share of your suffering and the others have theirs. Together, we help you carry the burden that you have assumed and made divine. There lies my hope, Lord, and my invincible trust. When the road is hard and monotonous, when it leads to the grave, I know that beyond the grave, you are waiting for me in your glory. Lord, help me to travel along my road faithfully at my proper place in the vast procession of humanity. Help me above all to recognize you and to help you in all my pilgrim brothers. For it will be a lie to weep before your lifeless image if I did not follow you living on the road that men travel.
Above all wonders the world has ever known. Above all Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to walk with you to Calvary, reflecting and praying at each station. The way of the cross that we have just completed is really a small token of our unity with you in your passion and sacrifice for us. The cross we carry is nothing like the cross you bear. The sacrifice we make is nothing compared to the pain and torture you went through. And yet, we dare to unite our own crosses in life, the pain, the sacrifices, the humiliation, the loneliness, the betrayal, the poverty that we have together with your passion, not to complete your sacrifice, but really to sanctify ours. Lord, as we offer your life for us, as you offer your life for us, we offer our lives for you as well. May our prayers and devotion today be pleasing to you and obtain for us your favor. May this way of the cross be a humble and bold expression of our faith to you. Strengthen our faith, belief, and trust in you. We ask that you bless all those who participated today in this way of the cross and give them the promise of being with you now and always where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen.